sometimes we need to solve logarithmic equations. And we'll use some similar ideas that came up in solving exponential equations. The idea there was to use a logarithm to solve an exponential equation because logarithms are inverses of exponential functions. Well, that means exponential functions are the inverses of logarithmic functions, so we can use exponential functions to solve logarithmic equations. Here's a short example. Suppose I have the following logarithmic equation, natural log of x equals 4. Natural log of x is the inverse of e to the x. So we can use that to get rid of the natural log function showing up in this equation. We can undo the logarithm using its inverse, the exponential function. So if I exponentiate both sides, e to the natural log of x equals e to the 4. Because they're inverses of each other, this composition e raised to the natural log of x. This is the logarithmic function inside of an exponential function. These cancel out, giving us just x on the left side. And so that is the solution. That's the exact answer. Here's one with a different base. So the natural logarithm, remember, is log base e. Now we have a log base 2. Well, the inverse of log base 2 is 2 to the x. So that's what we will use to undo this logarithm. I'll take this left side and make it the argument of the exponential function, the exponent in 2 to the x. So 2 to the log base 2 of x equals 2 to the 8. So on the left side, these exponential and logarithmic functions with the same base cancel each other out, giving us just x. And on the right side, 2 to the 8th, you could write it that way, or you could simplify it. 2 to the 8th is the same as 256. This one looks more complicated because there are two logarithms showing up. Fortunately, they both have the same base, so it won't be that much more difficult. One thing we could do is take advantage of the fact that we have the same base on both logarithms and use a property of logarithms to combine these. Here's the property I have in mind. If I have log base b of something plus log base b of something else, this can be rewritten as a single logarithm. That's the property that I can use to simplify the equation we started with. So instead of adding these two logarithms together, I can just multiply the arguments. So I get log base 4 of x times 2. Although it's probably more natural to write that with the constant coefficient first. So when I add these together, I can just multiply the arguments 2 times x. That's my left side. And now this looks like the previous problem we solved. How will we undo this logarithm, base 4, by exponentiating base 4? 4 raised to the log base 4 of 2x equals 4 raised to the 3 the 4 to the x and log base 4 of x are inverses. They cancel each other out, giving me 2x on the left side. 4 cubed is 64. And so when I isolate x, I get 32. Now, what if you had tried to approach this a different way? What if you exponentiated right at the very beginning? Well, let's try that. Let's take each side and make it the exponent in the exponential function 4 to the x. The 
this whole thing is equal to 3. Uh, so that should be 4 to the 3. Okay. Well, now we can use a property of exponential functions. Here's the one I have in mind. Let's write it with the base 4. So if I have 4 to the a plus b, another way to write that is 4 to the a times 4 to the b. So if I use that here, I'll get 4 to the log base 4 of x times 4 to the log base 4 of 2. I'm going to simplify the right side while I'm at it. 4 cubed is, again, 64. Now on the left side, I have these two things multiplied together. Let me emphasize that with parentheses. 4 to the log base 4 of x gives me x. 4 to the log base 4 of 2 gives me 2. And so again, I can isolate x by dividing both sides by 2, giving me the same answer. Both of these approaches work. In fact, you can think of this property of exponents and this property of logarithms as just being the same property viewed from different sides. They are, in some sense, the same idea written different ways.